Hi guys and welcome to this Porsche Taycan and also welcome to the future. So here we have a very good contender to lure you out of your regular petrol powered cars. This is the mid-range version of the Taycan, the turbo. Let's talk about the naming later, but there's also a slow 4S and a bonkers turbo S. This is the one you should buy, I think. It has well, quite modest 680 horsepower or 500 kilowatts and well just look at it it's absolutely gorgeous like the white paint job and these uh, Mission E style wheels they just look so good first thing you're gonna ask is what's the range how far can I drive with this car and Porsche claims in city driving if you're keeping it easy maybe even 500 kilometers in reality, it will be less than that. There is an upside to the range anxiety and that is acceleration and torque 850 newton meters and 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 3.2 seconds. The Turbo S does it in 2.8 and a lot of, you know, car viewers have managed to get it even faster than that. So this is why I'm gonna use my draggy and see how fast it really is. And I know you're all waiting for it, so let's just roll it. If you're gonna buy a Taycan, these are the wheels, and this is the you know this is the combination you want to get white on white. And if it was my spec, I would get a white leather or grey leather interior as well. And why would I get a white interior? Well, because this black one just looks quite bland. And this is the you know recyclable material cloth and Alcantara interior but yeah it doesn't feel nearly as expensive as a Porsche should in my opinion so pay just a little bit more for the full leather interior so about the practical side as well this is almost like a Panamera but the Panamera is a hatchback, this is a sedan, so to say, so the boot space is, let's say, more limited, but it is rather large and it will carry most things you need. Now, I'll show you the handles. This is new Porsche's design, they will eventually use it across the range, currently only the 992, 99, wait, 992, 911 have it, and the Taycan, but, and they pop up like this. It's a very neat feature, it makes the car look very sleek, but I think it will cause some problems in the winter. Well, we'll just have to see. Sitting at the back, it's not a Panamera, you know, sized car, so legroom is decent, but yeah, it's not too much. What else do we have back here? This is the four seat configuration. As standard this is how it comes you can also opt and pay for the fifth seat and you also get a nice handrest cool without further ado let's take it for a drive see what it feels like because let's be honest that's the main feature about this car its ability to just blow your brains out in straight line acceleration and driving feel first things first this car does not have a gear selector down here it has one up here and it's sort of a razor looking thingy just as the 992 porsche push it down and it's in drive to drive this feels like a regular normal car it's just the sound that's missing 
it just sort of hums it's like a it's like an electric car but if you're not used to it it's very um, weird so to say um, but thankfully Porsche has a solution to that no I don't want to use you sorry oh it's the voice control damn it anyway the car manufacturer beginning with P Porsche I don't want to use you come on okay so let's just say the Taycan has a electric sound generator so it would um, wait let's just put it into sport mode yeah and now it sounds like a sporty electric car I know it's it's weird but that's what it is it's different and again you have to get used to it but I rather like it now I've driven this car on a ice track before so I know how you know it feels when you're really really pushing it hard and that's where the electric sound really helps because you can't really understand how fast you're going especially in a corner because they, there are no gears well this is a two-speed gearbox so to say but you really don't understand how fast you're going so that's where the you know sport electric sound really helps you out as I mentioned the two-speed gearbox it has two stages so to say a fast one and a slower one they basically explain themselves but what I have found is that you really actually understand when you know it changes gear it's not bad or anything it's just that people say that you don't notice the gear changes you do I haven't gotten the best thing about this car yet because it's so so f fast it's so it's so fast it's so a word I can't use on YouTube fast that it's just incredible so this roundabout I'm gonna floor it once. <laughs> this is stupid. And handling as well actually, since the weight of the car is very low due to the batteries, it's just very nippy and you do not feel that this car is heavy, but trust me, it is very heavy. There's so much traffic here. God damn it. Okay. Anyway, yeah, this car handles really nicely. Uh, in normal mode, it's rather soft. If you put it in Sport Plus, it becomes like a go kart, basically. It's so precise, like. It's like a Porsche. Like a Porsche should be. But yeah, the, the main thing is the acceleration. It's just blows you away it's you you don't expect it to be this fast yeah this car is like three seconds to 100 kilometers but you you can't prepare you can't really prepare yourself for a acceleration or the immediate the immediate power of the electric engine it's just something else you have to you have to really try it to understand it actually this might be the fastest car I have ever driven I think I've sat in a 488 and that was also very very fast but I didn't drive it and yeah it's it, it's a completely different experience because this is just so it's just there the power is just there weird 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 but I'm not gonna talk more about the driving because well you know it's a great car to drive let's talk about the interior because I don't I don't think many of the car viewers have talked a lot about this sort of mixed cloth and Alcantara interior and it's not the one to buy in my mind you have to get a leather package whether it be black white red etc it just feels so much more quality don't get me wrong this isn't bad on the inside it just looks bland and it isn't like black it's sort of gray so it 
it's just halfway there and yeah I wouldn't spec it just pay a bit more and get the leather package um, Alcantara steering wheel is a must you also get heated steering wheel the button of the heated steering wheel is under here by the way behind the steering wheel it's it's a really nice option to have um, seats they are fairly huggy and fairly sporty so no complaints there um, driving position like a sports car you feel you sit down low you feel like you're in command yeah there's really nothing to complain about the quality on the interior if you're used to a Panamera it will be you know a step down in my mind Panameras are bigger on the inside they are a bit nicer and yeah all the materials etc they just feel a bit more special but this doesn't mean this is bad not in any way there are no hard plastics basically anywhere all the controls are logically laid out for me so to say the one gripe or downside I see with this car is the climate control display it, it's really difficult to get used to because you really have to know where you are pushing the climate control etc and also the volume for the radio or you know whatever you're playing you're listening to it's down here and it it buttons just put a scroll wheel button down here for everybody's sake and let's be done with it it's so much better and easier to use yes yes of course you have a volume you know button on the steering wheel but it's not the same I, w I want one down here it should be there let's not make everything digital please but the good thing is that the screen you know the main screen navigation screen is absolutely perfect in my mind it's it's just so easy to use you have navigation big screen it's fast it's usable all the settings you can ask for very very nice very nice indeed and if you really want to spend some extra money you can also have a passenger display I don't know I don't know why you should spec for it but you can if you want to it's about a thousand euros and well for me it's basically a waste of money as I already mentioned the price of the you know second display you can add let's talk about the price of this car and it's similar to a Panamera this turbo is roughly around 150,000 euros specced out to a normal specification like I would buy the Taycan it's around a, you know 168 170,000 euros and for that kind of money you can basically buy a mid-range Panamera a GTS or something like that what about options of this car what should you pick what should you not pick well the panoramic, the panoramic sunroof is one thing I would definitely spec I wouldn't get the speed you know I wouldn't get the second display because it's just stupid and why is it stupid because you can't really use it when you're driving it's, it's pointless for you and you can't even look at it because it only works if a passenger is sitting on the right side of you so it's pointless and useless don't buy it all the safety kit adaptive cruise control lane keep assist blind spot monitoring yes 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 take tick all of them uh, if you possibly can as for you know the paint job on the outside it's a personal choice I think I would get white on white because it looks just so good or black on white or black on red even it just it has to stand out in some way or another I think the turbo is the best buy because it's the mid-range and if you add the you know higher battery pack to the 4S and some options that the turbo by the way has as standard it's like 10,000 euros more expensive than a 4S I mean the turbo is so it's basically a no-brainer to get the turbo it will have a much better resale value it's better equipped it's a turbo for God's sake 
and well yeah you should you should just get the turbo if you're thinking about whether the turbo or the turbo s well i can't really help you there because the turbo is all the car you need but if you have the money and you really and you really really want the car to be you know extra fast well just get the turbo s there's nothing wrong with that the acceleration is just stupid it's really is it, it the immediacy of it it's, it's unreal unreal when I was planning this review, I wanted to find out whether this car was something I would actually want to own someday. And to be honest, yes, yes, I would be very happy to drive this car every day. It's all the car I need as a fast car, a family car, a sports car, etc. So why not? And it's it's electric. It saves you money, actually. It, it literally saves you money. Why wouldn't you buy it? That being said, uh, the charging network is, well, it's it's okay, but if you don't have a home charger, it's a bit difficult, to say the least, but the charging times are coming down very fast, and just in a couple of years, I think, they will be all around Estonia and all around Europe, so you will have no range anxiety. I know I'm not gonna drive this car very far, but yet still somehow i keep on looking at the range is it you know going down what is it doing this is range excited um is it bad no i don't think so you get used to it definitely as it is right now would i step into a porsche dealership and say no to a panamera gts and take this turbo I don't know. I I I really like the sound of the V8 and I think I would still go with the GTS, but in due time, in due time, I think I will accept the electric car and I would choose this way of driving. So yeah, guys, this was my short review of the Taycan Turbo. I really like the car. Um, it is the future, so to say. So, yeah. See you again in the future. Bye bye.